One enduring issue that plagues the Caribbean is the large number of people being left behind. This is especially so in Jamaica, with its population of close to 3 million, many of whom live in large inner city communities. Dr. Olivine Burke is a product of one such community who has made it her life's work to transform them. So I grew up in the um, Hanatown section of Western Jamaica. And like the Greater Augustone and the various communities in which I work now, it was a violent community. What made the difference for Dr. Burke was her parents, whose attitude was crucial to her success. My parents decided that they would leave everything behind and start all over again. And so we relocated to Vineyard Town. These early lessons stayed with her through her years teaching in high school. When she returned to UWI as an academic in 2001, she was attracted to Dr. Barry Chavans and the UWI Township Project, which aimed to make interventions in the depressed communities surrounding the UWI Mona campus. It was focusing on lowering unemployment and also lowering crime and violence. In 2008, it was the first time the principal of the University of the West Indies Mona campus was actually going in the community of the Greater Augustown, which is just a wall that separates the community from the campus. And uh, he toured the, the community and of course he was also appalled at the findings of abject poverty. The university agreed to invest in the project. When Chivans passed away in 2010, Dr. Burke took over the initiative and transformed it to the Mona social services of today. The university's goal is to revitalize Caribbean development. And people think of it as economic development, but we're also interested in social development. The change is achieved through six pillars of intervention. Education, health, entrepreneurship, reduction in crime and violence, and sports. So we were using that now a holistic approach to, to social intervention. You can't look at crime and violence reduction without doing something about the education level. If you can't reason things out, then you're going to be acting things out in a negative way. Yes? This meant repairing schools, creating kitchen gardens, and assisting people to start their own businesses and building bonds through sports. So what we do is we try to use sports to integrate the youths and to bring some sort of cohesion to them and also to build relationships with them. Um, we try to strengthen the relationship um, in the community through so sports. So the sports has really helped the community in that aspect. So because of the football program, what you find is that some of the youths get scholarships to go to school like Jamaica College, Woolmers and stuff like that. Some of them even now have the opportunities to be in an academy and they are going overseas. One of the tangible ways MSS intervened in the communities was awarding scholarships to qualified residents who would not otherwise be able to get to university. My alternate reality, had I not gotten the Mona Social Services, looks nothing like this. And I can definitely say I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be a township scholar because my existing reality is I'd say 75% as a result of their intervention in my life and coming from the community I can definitely see how they have a positive impact on persons like me who are promising but don't necessarily have the opportunity to attend tertiary level education. These students achieve not only for themselves but for the communities they represent. Sometimes the community stigma is significant. You can look at it from a, a number of different perspectives. One is the self-esteem of the individual is our herself in terms of going to university, right? Secondly, is the self-esteem of the community. My community, it's not well liked because a lot of violence uh, occurs on an everyday basis. Many of the members at my community, they also curse a lot. So because of that, they think that everyone from the community won't come out to anything good. We're treated differently sometimes because of our background. But apart from making meaningful interventions in her home country, Dr. Burke's intervention model can be applied outside of Jamaica as well. If you do something right, you'd like to see it replicated. We think what we do 
is a, is a model that should be replicated, not just in other campuses where there are tertiary education exercises, but just the fact that you can take what you have learned, what you know, what you research, what you are good at, and use it to help those who are less fortunate, are unable, or didn't have the opportunities. Mono Social Services gives us that kind of vehicle, and if we could do that in a number of countries, we would solve many of our social problems. And remember, social problem solved means you would now solve some of your financial problems, many of your crime problems. It is the key to success, and we must not forget that as we develop our Caribbean. The achievement is considerable, but the individual who made all those parts work together is equally remarkable. Dr. Burke provides what you call a fixed asset, because you know that especially in inner city communities, the so-called dance, they provide guns, they provide weed for the youths, and they give them probably like they just give them a name, I give them local food and all of that. But Dr. Burke provides a platform for us to be educated and this education lasts us for a lifetime. For these reasons, Dr. Olivine Burke of Jamaica is the Anthony N. Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence Laureate in Public and Civic Contributions for 2020.